Well, I think that one of the things that impresses me right off the bat with respect to all of uh, the photos in the exhibit uh, is the change in um, ground cover uh, in the canyon. Uh, when uh, Lindbergh flew in 1929, uh, this was uh, following a period of intense cattle and sheep operations in the canyon, and there's in many respects almost no ground cover uh, at all. This is particularly so around Pueblo Benito in the uh, aerial uh, that uh, Lindbergh has of looking down on Pueblo Benito. Uh, <coughs> looking at the photograph that um, Lindbergh took in 1929 of Pueblo Benito, uh, it's really interesting in, in a number of respects. This photograph was taken two years after Neil Judd completed six years, six uh, years with summer uh, excavations at Pueblo Benito, and what Judd managed to do was completely excavate uh, this great house. At that time, this was the only great house that was completely excavated, and as a matter of fact, uh, today it still remains as the only great house in Chaco Canyon that has been uh, completely excavated. Uh, so it's very interesting to uh, see two years after Judd finished uh, how Pueblo Benito looked at that time. I'm also struck by the fact that uh, on the right hand side of this photograph within Pueblo Benito there was a lot of white uh, around the various kivas in Pueblo Benito and this represents the initial attempts that Neil Judd made to um, preserve this site. It was a kind of stabilizing of the ruin. He was using concrete, which is obvious with the white color, uh, but nonetheless he recognized the need once he had excavated this site to preserve uh, the site as much as possible because clearly it was going to become even more of a major attraction to the public than it was uh, at that time. Uh, the other thing that is really striking about this photograph, well, there are many things, but the thing that I notice mostly uh, is that when Lindbergh was there in 1929 uh, uh, and took the photo, which incidentally was the same year uh, that my father, Gordon Vivian, was in Chaco Canyon in the University of New Mexico Archaeological Field School under Edgar L. Hewitt. Um, so at this time, uh, this great slab of rock against the cliff face behind Pueblo Benito, which is very clear in Lindbergh's photo, uh, was still standing. Essentially, it was this huge, huge piece of cliff which had separated from the cliff face and was standing uh, by itself. Uh, that uh, piece of cliff uh, was known by the Navajos, well Pueblo Benito was known by the Navajos as the place where the rock is propped up. And this was because the Pueblo Benitans had placed a lot of major posts under the slight uh, cutting under of this slab in an effort to keep the rock up, and it worked. Uh, and built a wall at the base of it to also keep it propped up. And I think the thing that probably kept it there all that time is that they were also placing pajos or prayer sticks under the rock uh, to keep it from falling down, uh, and it didn't fall on uh, Pueblo Benito while uh, they were living there. Uh, the Wetherills, who were there in the 1890s and early 1900s, for some reason called this rock the elephant. Uh, but then the National Park Service at some time, uh, probably in the 1930s or early 40s, uh, began referring to it as threatening rock, as it was this big slab of rock that was threatening to fall down on Pueblo Benito. The earliest people at Pueblo Benito who built the first part of Pueblo Benito on the left-hand side in this photo, or to the west, actually placed that early building in the late 800s, the early 900s, away from that rock. So that there was no danger that that building that they built at that time uh, could have been hit with the rock falling over. However, as this building expanded through major building episodes through time into the late 11, mid to late 1100s, that building 
moved further and further to the east, thereby putting it in front of threatening rock or the elephant or uh, the propped up rock. Uh, and uh, eventually, as we can see in Adriel Heise's photograph, uh, that slab did come down. That was in uh, January the 22nd, 1941. That rock came down after a very uh, wet winter. It was one of the wettest winters on record. And in fact, the Park Service knew that this rock was moving. They were awfully afraid that it might come down. They were taking measurements at the top. They had rebar at the top between the cliff and Threatening Rock, and they were measuring the movement away from the cliff. And in the morning, uh, the, uh, like I say, January 22, 1941, uh, it, it fell. Uh, we were living at that time on the other side of the canyon in the University of New Mexico Archaeological Field Station. And the custodian, the superintendents at that time were called custodians. The custodian's wife, Lorraine McKinney, uh, wrote a letter to a number of friends, which was uh, later reproduced. Uh, and in her letter to her friend, she said, the ladies of the canyon were having tea at the Vivians this morning when the rock came down. Uh, my mother recalled uh, that it was like an earthquake. Uh, they immediately knew what had happened because they knew the rock was moving. Uh, they all rushed out, all, probably three or four ladies, uh, rushed out. And uh, mother said that it was, they, they couldn't see anything on that side of the canyon because of the dust. It was just this enormous amount of dust, but the ground had actually shaken when it came down. So they jumped in the car and drove over and then idiotically began climbing all over this broken rock, which was still pieces of it coming down. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. The rock eventually fully settled, but <clears throat> it did at that time take out uh, the highest part of the back wall of Pueblo Benito and took down or put rocks in about 30 rooms at that back portion of Pueblo Benito, so that when you go today uh, to Chaco and walk through Pueblo Benito, the Park Service now has a station, a sort of a viewing area on a top of the fallen rubble of uh, threatening rocks so that you can be a little above the plaza area of Pueblo Benito and at the same time be standing on the remains of the elephant or uh, threatening rock. So it's, we, have, we have a very valuable record of what that, uh, an aerial record, the one uh, uh, taken by Lindbergh of what that rock looked like and its position with respect uh, to Pueblo Benito. Uh, so Lindbergh's photographs overall uh, provide us for this part of the canyon uh, with uh, some really, really good material, both in terms of the history of archaeology in the canyon uh, and in terms of the uh, prehistoric Chacoan uh, development over 300 years of uh, several great houses in this part of the canyon.